Thanks for joining us to learn about the inspection and maintenance of your stormwater pond. The pond is probably the most complex and important component of your stormwater facility, as it's designed to have a storage capacity specific to the requirements of your development. Storage capacity is the amount of water your stormwater pond is designed to contain. One of the primary reasons for maintaining your stormwater pond is to make sure that the storage capacity is preserved and isn't getting filled with sediment or debris. With that in mind, let's break down the basics of what you need to consider for keeping your pond in tip-top shape. Different parts of the pond require different inspection frequency, but it's good practice to inspect your pond monthly and after storms. If there's a fence around your pond, make sure that the fence is intact, gates open and close easily, and the lock on the gates function. Fences around stormwater ponds provide a safety barrier to prevent unnecessary foot traffic and protect the facility. Stormwater ponds are not meant to be recreational sites. You'll also want to make sure that the access road or ramp to your pond is in good condition and clear for heavy machinery to move in and out. Now let's take a look at the inlets and outlets of your pond, which are the pipes, ditches, or other conveyances that allow water to flow into and out of your pond. First and foremost, make sure that you know the location of your inlets and outlets so you can keep them clear of any trash, debris, and vegetation. If there's rock armoring around the inlets and outlets, make sure it's in place and no erosion is occurring. Connected to the outlets of your pond, you'll find a control structure. The control structure is a large concrete vault or manhole and it contains a flow restrictor. The control structure acts as a final depository for sediment and pollutants before stormwater exits the pond. The flow restrictor is a vertical pipe that controls the rate that the water leaves the pond. You want to make sure that the control structure is free of debris and that the sediment does not exceed one-third of the depth from the bottom of the basin to the bottom of the lowest pipe. If the catch basin has cracks in the walls or the grout around the pipe is crumbling, you should have it repaired as necessary. Make sure that the orifice on the bottom of the flow restrictor is not blocked and that the shear gate opens and closes easily. When doing inspections and maintenance of the control structure, it's important to note that only trained professionals should enter catch basins, as they can contain dangerous gases. Next, let's look at the spillway and berms. A spillway is a low area in the pond wall constructed with rock or concrete, which allows water to spill over if the water level gets too high. The spillway is a safety feature that helps protect the pond walls, as well as the neighboring properties. Annually check to make sure that the rock on the spillway is in place, there isn't any visible erosion, and that it's free of trees. The walls of your pond require similar maintenance to your spillway and berms. Walk the perimeter of your pond quarterly and keep an eye out for erosion, sloughing, or settling of the slopes, rodent holes, and water seeping through the sides. Work with a professional to deal with pest issues. You may need to consult with an engineer if the pond walls, berm, or spillway are damaged. Vegetation is another key player in your pond, and proper management of it is possibly the single most important action that will improve the appearance and performance of your facility. Inspection of the vegetation in your pond should be done annually, but the maintenance will likely need to be more frequent. Grasses are the most common vegetation used in stormwater pond construction. The roots help hold soil in place, prevent erosion, and grass is fairly simple to maintain. Grass should be mowed during the dry season and should be kept between four and nine inches tall. Grass clippings should be removed from the pond area. If any areas of the pond walls are bare, you'll want to reseed those areas as soon as possible. Trees around your pond might look nice, but they can lead to problems such as roots clogging pipes, damaging pond walls, or providing too much shade for grass to grow. They can also contribute to taking up storage space of the pond as they drop their leaves every fall. Remove seedlings before they establish themselves as larger trees. Removal of larger trees may require permitting and other special consideration and should be discussed with a stormwater professional. In-pond vegetation and sediment accumulation often go hand in hand, as the accumulated sediment gives many aquatic plants a nice place to live. If over 25% of your pond has vegetation during the wet season, it may need to have sediment and vegetation removed. This is especially true if you see vegetation in the deepest part of the pond. Cattails are a good indicator that your pond has too much sediment. Plants that appear on the surface, like lily pads and algae, can be removed using rakes and other tools that can cut the plant off under the surface of the water. Keep an eye out for invasive weeds like English ivy, 
Himalayan blackberry, and knotweed, just to name a few. They outcompete the more desirable vegetation, spread quickly, and can make maintenance difficult. If you see an oil sheen on your pond or suspect that other chemicals have been dumped into the water, remove them immediately by using an oil absorbent pad or consult a professional with a vector truck. Locate the source of the pollutant so the problem can be corrected. As we mentioned earlier, a pond is an important part of your stormwater system and they can be costly to maintain if they've been ignored for a long period of time. Contact Whatcom County Public Works for technical assistance. We can provide guidance and support to help you make sure your pond is functioning properly. Thanks for your time and interest, and we look forward to working with you.